How's it going guys and welcome to this video a more of an educational-ish kind of video than I'm used to making but I've just done my first year on YouTube and I wanted to sort of give a bit of information to people who are thinking on starting YouTube or who are sort of, I don't know, not sure or have questions or whatever. If you do have any questions about starting YouTube or anything like that please don't hesitate to drop a comment down below and uh, I'll try and hopefully, I don't know, get an answer that would perhaps help you. Anyway, so if you are interested in, in starting YouTube, the first thing I would recommend you doing is doing some research on the sort of videos you want to do. So for instance, I usually make vlogs, but I also do little different videos as well. But let's say you wanted to do cooking videos or mechanic videos or history videos or whatever search youtube for the type of videos that are already about and search sort of how they do it don't obviously take how they do it and do that yourself but at least know sort of what they're doing why they do it like that why they're so successful and uh, sort of adapt your own personal way of doing it on terms of searching things for youtube also check out a few different things like this video you've clicked on here my video that is going to help you well hopefully it's going to help you but other people like Nick Nimmin and Daryl Eves and uh, anybody sort of like that who are literally about YouTube if you're interested in you know being successful on YouTube check out those pages as well as YouTube being the channel or the platform for you to put your videos it's also a great platform to learn and I think well I feel like I've learned so much about YouTubing and stuff you know from YouTube so make sure you check out some videos from those guys and people who are sort of explaining how YouTube works because it doesn't work exactly how you'd feel uh, like how you'd expect now when I started YouTube I didn't ever put anything in my tags I didn't really understand what the tags were about um, and I didn't put a ton of effort into my thumbnails over this year you're gonna learn that tags are so important tags are basically like a different search way for your video if you will so say I did a video on fish and chips I'd title the video fish and chips perhaps but I'd also put in the tag fish chips chips and fish fish and chips eating fish and all these different ways of saying fish and chips so that people would then be able to find my video whether they wrote fish and chips or a different variation because people won't particularly search for your video exactly how you've written your title so these increase your chances of your video being seen and on top of that they really help because a lot of youtubers that have been established for longer will have obviously their video up at the top of the list if you weird your video a bit differently you're more likely to catch some other people for your audience and that will hopefully help you build on your audience. Now another thing over this first year that I will say, I, I was always quite good at it, but it's definitely a tip for people, make sure you have good organisation skills. Now I've got a hard drive with all the videos I make on, all the little preset things I do, so like at the end of my video you'll see a, uh, a bit of a video of me pointing to different ways for the videos, like what videos you'd be suggested to you and my subscribe button and stuff. Now that is on my hard drive so when I make my video I can literally get that straight onto the video and it's there, it's all done. I'm not having to mess around searching for it, I'm not having to go through loads of different files to find it. Make sure that you're like so organised because when you start YouTube and you've made your first video and whatnot, it's so easy to be organised. Put them in your folders, keep it nice and tidy. You can make the computer literally sort your files in order and stuff itself and whatnot. That's so easy. You don't want to do four months, five months, six months of YouTube and put quite a few videos out there and then you need to find this picture you took a few months ago or this clip that you were going to use in a video in a few months time and stuff. It will be a nightmare to find if you don't organise from day one. You don't, as well, you don't want to be organising four or five months in and having to move all videos around because it's just so confusing. You can't remember when you've recorded things, why you've recorded a lot of things 
or sort of how you're going to put them in, in some sort of order that makes sense. So make sure it doesn't have to be a hard drive. I mean, I bought a hard drive because I make so many videos that are so long and I've got so much extra footage. Also, I liked having it because I take a lot of photos, so it was nice to have somewhere to put them. But you could literally use, I mean, the storage on your on your computer or laptop, or perhaps a memory stick or something like that. But I don't know. Something like hard drive is an ideal investment, and you can pick them up at reasonable prices nowadays. Not ones like this lacy one. This was ridiculously expensive. But I've got a um, a normal hard drive that isn't a solid state one that I bought when I started YouTube. And um, as long as you're not going to carry it around with you like I do with this one, it should be should be fine. But one of the biggest tips I can give you guys is don't be disheartened and it's not so much about how people react because I have found and this might just be me but most people that I've told about me making vlogs on YouTube have been quite supportive even people I thought I, I was sort of dreading to find out because I thought they'd be horrible or they'd take the make and stuff and it wasn't that it bothered me that much but I just didn't want to have to go through it even they were very sort of in well not, not even like supportive and stuff but really interested in the fact that I do it and I suppose kind of a bit supportive um, but the real thing that is hard with the first uh, massively the first year of YouTube is your sort of your momentum and your motivation for doing YouTube so momentum is a big thing and motivation is a big thing believe it or not they are two different things once you have put one video out there and then you put your next video out there and then you put the next video out there you will have momentum and you will want to keep going and going and going and going and it is such a great place to be at to be uploading say weekly and you've got this video going every week and you're working towards it and you're dead excited and you're all in it and that is great but you can then take a week off which then becomes another week off which then becomes a third week off and then that's where it just sort of it stops so once you've got that momentum going where you're uploading regularly you really have to just like keep up with it otherwise as soon as you stop and then you're like oh it's, it's been two weeks now so like a third week isn't really going to matter and you're like well i've done a bit this third week but i'll like, upload it in another week so it's like it's been three weeks so what's four weeks and then you just sort of put it in the back of your mind and then five weeks goes on, six weeks goes on and then you're struggling to start again because you've had like this six week gap and then you're like, I didn't really want to upload this video because I made it like four or five weeks ago and it's a bit irrelevant now but then I want to upload something and it, it just becomes a massive thing. That's where the momentum sort of kicks in so if you're uploading regularly it's, it's a lot better of a place to be in. The whole um, motivation thing uh, that's a uh, it's completely different to momentum to motivate yourself to do it you can't just think it's not going to be a good enough video to upload so I can't do it the amount of times over this this last year itself but even before that I've picked up my camera recorded a day's vlog or whatever and just looked at it and like that is that is awful and if, if you've watched some of my videos like watch back some of my videos some of them are all ridiculous some of them are not that great there are videos that are worse than that that i've looked at at the end of the day and i'm like no i can't publish that but the whole me going out and taking videos and recording and taking photos and stuff and also then editing them a bit and then realizing maybe yes or no was experience, an experience that, I was, uh, that I'm grateful for and that I feel like I'm better for now than I was before. On top of that, I feel like this is more of a a tip for vloggers and whatnot rather than your normal car, me well, car mechanics or bakers or whatever your channel wants to be. If you're a vlogger, take your camera everywhere and like my setup, I'll put a picture of myself here, it is ridiculous, it's huge, it's a big DSLR with a big microphone and a big light and at the start of the year like I only had the camera and the microphone and it was a bit like I didn't really want to take it around, I have to get around a bit and not a lot, I had a smaller lens on then as well um, but the more I took it around, even if I literally, like I'd, I'd take it to the shops not take a single photo, not record anything, take it on a walk, go to the shops go here go there 
and just carry it around. Even just doing that made me feel more comfortable to take it out in public to the fact where, or to the point where I can now take it out in public if I want to. I still didn't feel 100%, don't get me wrong. It's not like some sort of, do it a couple of times and then you'll be fine. You'll always, I think, you'll always find it a little bit awkward and that's just because of the nature of what it is. But honestly, the more you take it, even if you don't use it, just having it with you is like a, a great thing to overcome this well, fear, I suppose. Another thing that I've learned in uh, this last year is scheduling videos. Now, I, we've got in a funny way with it. So I saved up like six videos and I was uploading six weeks in advance uh, or six weeks I was six weeks behind when I was, either way, like I'd made six videos and one had upload and I'd be making a video the same weekend, but it was six weeks later on than the video that was recorded was uploaded, if that makes sense. And I thought at first, when I started doing this, I was like, what, like, genius, stay six weeks or even at a point I did three weeks ahead and you'll be fine, but that really beats your momentum. So my videos were scheduling, I didn't have to think about them at all, uh, I only had to add one video a week. But you'll get to a weekend and you're like, ooh, I've not got much on on the Saturday so I won't make a video, Sunday might be a bit more interesting. And then Sunday comes around and you're like, oh, I need to do, I need to go to the shops and then I've got this family meal thing that would be a bit awkward if I vlogged it and like it wouldn't be ideal. So like. But then I'm six videos ahead, so I'll, I'll leave this week and then I'll just maybe do two videos next week. You never do two videos the next week if that's how you think. And it, you kind of get really safe with having all these videos to upload and that are doing their own thing so you don't have to touch it. And you're kind of happy, um, but you lose this momentum. And the momentum is just so important because you then get, you not so much get lazy with it, but you get lazy with it and then that takes such a, a massive knock-on effect to your videos that are going out. Also takes a video uh, effect, sorry, to the quality because you're then sort of half-heartedly doing it because you know that it's going on in six weeks and on top of that, because of the fact that it's going on in six weeks, you sort of lose the excitement for it. If you're doing video week by week, you have this sort of excitement to upload, but that is, it's all condensed. So you start at the start of the week, or say the weekend, you make your video, you edit your video, you upload the video, you're excited to see what people think. I've had videos, I, there was one that I did not so long ago called something like Free Things To Do In Boston. And that video, I was so excited about sharing because it was one of the first videos where I massively went out in public and literally the hometown of where I live I went out and recorded these bits and it was so exciting to sort of put it out because it was a bit scary but I had like four videos lined up for before that so I uploaded it like four or five weeks later and by then like, I was still excited but I'd sort of lost the real excitement to the fact that I was putting the video on it just kind of went on and I think I even missed the schedule of when it went on so I I didn't know it had gone on until like two days after and I was like, oh yeah, that video I was really excited about has gone on um, and it's sort of done so well or not so well and stuff and, it, and you just sort of lose that excitement and when you lose the excitement that you've lost from the momentum, you then lose the motivation, which is a real shame. Something that I do really want to say is, earlier on I showed you a picture of my camera rig, now that was more on the gear and stuff, I've got quite a lot of gear. Um, but you honestly really don't need it. Like I know it's easy for me to say with a thingy, a, a decent camera and whatnot. Um, but like even you'll tell watching this video, my video is no better because it's shot on my my proper camera as opposed to on my phone and stuff. The only thing that does matter when it comes to gear and stuff um, isn't so much the gear, but it's like lighting. So if you can record, if you're at home near a window or near like a really good lamp or whatever do that but if you're recording like you know if i turn my lights off now so if i turn this one off see how dark it is it's kind of cool i look like a villain but say i turn this one off down here 
and I'm recording and it still kind of looks cool because of that but my point is you can't really see what's going on now that I'm in focus the ISO is higher and it should be a lot grainier it's struggling to find my face but you see how grainy it is and stuff when you click on a video and you can see how grainy it is like that you might be like you sort of lose interest or you're not watching the video properly so make sure there is plenty of light as well as another point I'll just turn these back on so you guys don't you know, lose interest. Another thing that is really, really, really important is sound. So you see how I just made that bang and that squeak and stuff from my chair? That was more than likely quite annoying. Uh, but my voice, apart from being a bit dry because of the fact that this is like the third video I've made here in a row in the last like two hours, my voice should be pretty clear because I bought a fairly decent microphone and a fairly decent dead cap for it so it should be acceptable-ish to listen to having things like this so the chances are at the minute whilst I'm talking it's very rough and bangy and stuff you know like GoPro audio and that is really not something you want and I'm not saying go out and buy you know a light box or a microphone and stuff all I'm saying is say you are just recording on your phone and most phone qualities now like mine i've got an iphone 8 it's 4k it's actually really really good but if i go in a dark room it's not as good the microphone if i go out in the wind it's not so good so what i'm saying is if you are just using your phone help it out don't go in the, you know, the darkest room you can find try and stay out places where it's light and you know don't walk out in the wind because of the the results are terrible and don't get me wrong like I, I've done it so many times during the year but you go back to edit your footage and you're watching back and all of a sudden you're walking through a field or something and it's going and you're just like what was I thinking so try not to make that mistake because by the time you've come to editing it's too late so I hope you've learned something from this video I hope it hasn't put you off starting YouTube I hope I've maybe given some sort of advice that will help you in your first year of YouTube. Like I say, if you do have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I really appreciate that you've watched this video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out like legitimate YouTube channels that teach you how to do stuff. Uh, like Think Media and Nick Nimmin and Daryl Eves and people like that because they will genuinely help you on YouTube. I just and saying kind of stuff that I've learned from my first year which may or may not help you I mean they may not be issues for you you might be able to find your files and they're all about the place and stuff um, and you might be able to do really well with a dark room and a, a camera that can't particularly deal with low light uh, at the end of the day it's really all about the story and whatnot but uh, personally these are things that I found so hopefully that will help you guys Thank you for watching and like I say I hope I'll see you in the next video.